Hi everyone, the following video is a recording of our 25th Artist Feedback AMA session that featured all genres of NFT photography and was hosted in the Meta Jungle Discord. This session was held on October 6th and hosted by talented photographers Mike Schmidt and Arwen Levinson. We want to thank Mike and Arwen for their time in reviewing eight different NFT collections, as well as all the artists that submitted their work for review and everyone that was able to attend. In this session, they provided great details and tips and tricks for curating and creating your NFT collections and additions, and we hope you find it useful. So with that, let's go on ahead and get into it. And I just want to start off by saying thanks, Arwen, um, for doing so many AMAs lately. Uh, you're always willing to jump in and do them. You almost did three in a row. <laughs> um, so thanks a lot for that. Um, it really shows your dedication to helping other people and it's just your dedication in the community as well. And um, Arwen is also a um, fantastic landscape uh, photographer. So always great to have you. And um, you know, always, always great to see the contrast in, um, in your opinions based on the collections and being able to you know, talk through that. It's hard to do it by myself. It's a lot easier to uh, bounce things off people. Am I coming in okay for you, Arwen? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear and see your screen. Okay, great, great. Awesome. Cool. So, um, first collection is called Aviana, and this is by Manny. And we'll take a look at the, uh, the collection and we'll go to the questions I had. Actually, let's just go to the questions first. It says, uh, just before I even do a rundown, um, can the village be shown better? And then thoughts on the collection. So pretty simple questions here. So uh, let's read the description. So this place is Abiana, uh, a small village in Persia that has an old and rich culture that always preserves its culture. They have simple houses that are close together and all their walls are yellow and orange in color. And these colors give this city its character. The best time to travel here can be in autumn because the trees become the color of the walls and you can see a beautiful scene. Collection was taken in 2021. So pretty good artist statement. This is a little idea of the place that we're uh, looking at the colors. Um, and so, you know, as soon as I opened this up, um, what stood out to me is like the colors, like the colors are really beautiful and they're also, um, they, they work really well, like next to each other, like really beautiful color relationships. I don't know why, but the stairs really stand out to me. Um, so I'm gonna open them up. Stairs at this location. This one's called Gesture. Um, and so the the, the artist it's uh, it just says a uh, 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 Vienna number five. Um, personally, I'd probably come up with you know like a, a better description than just putting um, the name of the collection and the number and the artist and stuff like that. Like. Um, you know, a little, a, a little bit about, you know, what, what the geometry and colors and stuff like that mean to you or, or just anything there that might be interesting to the collector. But let's open this up. And so with beautiful, beautiful line work. I love, I love how the, the, I love how the railing starts up here and kind of leads us down and just goes perfectly down into this like darkness. These shots kind of remind me, I don't know why, but of like, um, of the show Squid Games. And the colors that they had in, in some of those some of those uh, those rooms and games. So here's the blue one in comparison, and, and from a different angle, and just a totally different feel with the coolness and the colors are just really really beautiful. Even in the tiles, all these little these little dotted blue colors and stuff. It's I, I wish I wish they had some uh, some color in New York City um, like this within the. the uh, within the housing areas of communities, but they, it's, it's different. It's different vibe, right? Discipline. And this looks like it's, uh, you know, studying in, in squares and shapes and also also shadows that shadows that kind of um, dissect these windows, creating a triangular pattern. So it's geometry shown here. Interesting shot. Not my favorite in the collection. I do like the, the two stairs. And I think um, my other favorite is actually uh, this one, I think this is a this is a really interesting uh, composition, and I love the 
I love the, how the, uh, the oranges change in tonality here, and you can kind of see the decay of the top of the building and, and all the little uh, details here. And that little cloud <laughs> um, sort of looks like an airplane coming through, but a little cloud adds a lot to this, right? Because without that cloud, um, it wouldn't be the total that it is. It has a beautiful weighted upper, upper left hand corner. And, um, and then the last shot here, um, Memorial House, which, you know, once again, like the, the description would be interesting to know a bit about this Memorial House. But yeah, so uh, beautiful minimalism. I actually really like this one too. Lots of, lots of squares, circles, lines, um, and just these patterns here in the bricks, just a lot to look at. So really interesting. Um, so, with that being said, what um, what do you think of the uh, what do you think of this collection? And maybe the questions they said about you know can the village be shown better? Um, thoughts on the collection, and then I'll lend some of my advice to that as well. Right. Well, on this one, I actually have similar thoughts to you. Um, I love the stairs, uh, and I love the way the bottom left one. Um, colors kind of pull the colors of everything together and the cloud balances the photo perfectly. I really like the collection a lot. The colors, like you said, are really what stand out to me. Um, but I do feel, and I don't say this very often, um, that maybe a few more could be added because going to your question of can the village be shown better, I exactly. feel like I could get more of a feel for the village if there were a few more here. Um, and maybe even one with the trees that are mentioned in the description, which when I read that description, I wanted to see the trees. Um, <laughs> so that's really the only thing I would recommend is that, you know, I don't really feel like I have a good feel for the village from these limited images. Perfectly said and exactly what I was going to refer to in, in that question is that uh, in bringing up um, autumn and how the trees lend to this sort of that the colors of the trees sort of lend to um, this architecture would be really interesting to see this arch uh, this man made these man made structures um, juxtaposed against like nature that has really cool colors. So I would love to see some of those shots in this collection too. And like you said, like, I don't say that very often too, that photos should be added to a collection, especially when they haven't had any sales yet. But I just think it would just bring like a new layer of, of like, of dynamism. I think that's the word to the, to the collection and just like, um, just like bring it together and just like my eyes would, you know, really with 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 you know even just three more images down you had to create a set of, set of eight right but yeah it's um it's it's i i love the collection i really do i love colors i love geometry i love shadows i think it has all of that um with adding adding into those some of those shots from autumn that you're talking about would be really cool um you know this the, the cover photos uh, interesting um probably you know probably pull it up a little bit and to the right to uh, to show a little bit more of that there and the main main image looks good too um yeah uh so i you know i really don't have anything else in this collection i think the the pricing is is totally fair especially for uh foundation and yeah they're they're uh, they're gorgeous images so i've got and nothing else from you arwen right I don't think we're, I think, I think we both really like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go on cool. if you are. For sure. Cool. So our next collection is, um, is Unknown Neighbors, and this is by Ramez Soy. Um, let's just look at the questions first. Why not sell out? Why hasn't it sold out, basically? Um, overall assessment. So pretty, pretty general. We, we usually cover this stuff anyway. Um, Looking at first glance, um, the banner here. Wish the banner was pulled up a little bit more so that we could see the images. Open is annoying with this. It's it's a little hard to get that banner correct. Um, but you know, uh, 
a collector's coming in first time to, to see a collection, um, it's best to have a, a good first impression because it shows that, um, you know, you really care about the collection and you're putting in the most work possible to make it, uh, to make it look really great. Um, this little unknown uh, neighbors thing here looks really cool. I love the little, uh, little symbol we got going. Um, so unknown neighbors, heroes in history seem, seem to us poetic because they are. But if we should tell the simple truth of some of our neighbors, it would sound like poetry. Uh, and so that's a quote by George uh, William Curtis. Uh, really interesting, and I feel like it really, really sort of lends to the idea of what this collection is about. You know, it would be nice to have a little bit of, uh, of your own writing in here, too, to kind of bring some of that together from that poetry from George. Um, so floor price, 0 0.12. Let's go to the activity. Um, so there are three, uh, are three that sold. You got Leslie Spurlock, Alpha, and um, Mojo Heads. Those are really big collectors and great names. Mojo Heads is huge in the space, and obviously Alpha Trilogy and Leslie are big collectors. Five and six months ago, though, so um, really long time ago on this. That's like when one of ones were moving, and we were in um, when we were in a, a market where it wasn't so soft. It was easier to uh, to sell work, so um, you know, leading to that question about you know why not sell out? Um, you know, we went into a soft market. That's true, but also uh, should probably be uh, talking about the work still. You know, let's see uh, on Twitter um, if the artist is is you know so the artist has a different banner up here. So moving on some to some different work. You know, that's always fine. Um, let's click on media look through some of this so you know sharing photos is good but you know there's no there's no description or anything here so use up the space in your tweet to talk about the images these are from different collections too um so maybe a post with the images from this collection and then you know what the collection means to you and then maybe throwing in you know that 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 poetic quote from george um you know, and, and also, let's see, there's a link. You know, no link or anything like that here. Someone responded to you and you didn't respond back. You know, I, I would always, you know, for my engagement, at least, I, I always like everyone's, you know, comments, um, you know, unless they're just not nice. And, you know, I always usually respond to um, all of my friends who are commenting. That just keeps the algorithm moving and it's just a nice thing to recognize other people for that. So. What I'm seeing is just a lot of shared media. Um, also helps if you throw a GM at the top of your post, it brings in a lot of engagement. I know it's annoying, but it's just true. So yeah, see just, you know, good morning, Nate, but nothing about where the collection is from. So I think you're, uh, you need a little work with your, um, you know, just your, your marketing of your own work and your, uh, your storytelling here. So um, I'm glad that I pulled that up. So let's take a look at the collection. We read the uh, we read the description. Put it from the oldest because it's usually how it's minted. And uh, take a look through some of the uh, the grid here. So uh, that one sold. So it sold. Doesn't really matter to me which one sold. I usually don't go by. But let's take a look. So Shepherd uh, it's soon. Um, yeah, beautiful, um, beautiful portraits. You know, you can tell that these portraits are taken on. Um, a wide angle, uh, wide angle lens. It's taken so long to load. OpenSea has been really slow for me lately. Man. They, they, need, they need to make an update or something. But uh, I always love to see wide angle um, portraits because you know that the artist is really, really close to that subject. I mean, in this shot, probably the artist is like, you know, three feet or even less from the subject. So uh, I, that shows me that the artist builds relationships with their their actual subjects. And this is a beautiful shot. I love the man's eyes, how he's staring into you. Um, the, the, the the fist holding the uh, holding the stick here, just just even closer to the frame, adding that dimension. And the background is is absolutely beautiful. So we have foreground, midground, and background with the sheep um, in the background there grazing in the fields. And a and a really really dynamic, really dynamic scope. And so um, you know, no, uh, well, this one sold, so you can't add, you can't add um, properties in here. But for the ones that didn't sell, I would certainly add the properties. Um, 
talk about her, her tradition uh, is a very old in Anatolian lands. People have been affected very much financially and culturally for many years. Um, this friend of ours, a young person who came to Anatolia from Afghanistan, is practicing the shepherd's profession here. I tried to make this beautiful story uh, immortal with this photo. So great description, right? So just try to um, try to transfer your your great writing into your uh, to your artist statement. See, so this is another sheet uh, sheet herder as well. Let's take a look at this one real quick. <clears throat> Sorry for open seas delays. Is that happening to you uh, lately too, Arwen? Where like open sea loads super slow on a lot of things, or is it just me? Yeah, it's been happening to me a lot, um, especially if it's like large images. I find. Um, it's super slow lately, just the past few days. Yeah, it is. Um, another beautiful shot here. I like, like, you know, this, this gaze that you're getting from the, the subjects, it's really difficult to connect like that. You could feel the connection. Um, you know, the background, it's a little bit, it's a little, the clarity is a little hard for me, I think. I don't, I don't know. It's, it, it feels a little bit, um, a little high on the clarity like i don't mind the clarity in the subject in the, in the in the foreground because that's the main subject but um when you have a shallow depth of field like this it, it, it feels like if you punch the clarity on a shallow depth of field on the background it just kind of creates this i don't know it's, it's it feels a little bit i don't know if it's muddy or or whatnot you, um as far as editing goes how do you feel about the, uh, that Rowan? No, I feel the same way. When I first looked at this one, I would say I thought it looked busy. Um, and maybe that's what's making it seem that way. Um, but I know I didn't like it quite as much as the other ones. Like, I loved the other one you had open. Um, mm -hmm. the, sheep her, the shepherd. Um, Yasin. Yasin. But for me, I mean, when you have a beautiful sky and things like that, that just really draws me in. So, of course, that one would be my favorite. Um, but, yeah, out of all of them, this one felt what I would call busy, um, which I think maybe adding that clarity in the background is what did that. For sure. And so looking at the collection, like, like in a general way, like um, I'm just looking at it, it, it feels a lot like um, people who are – like these working class people that, that do their thing. And then, you know, then you have um, this shot that is like the only one that's not environmental. Um, so it, it almost, you know, it, it doesn't really fit for me because it's not uh, environmental and it, it doesn't really show too much of, um, I guess, I guess a background in which, which bring, which ties it, uh, ties the whole image uh, together, where some of these are, are really environmental. Right, so this um, from Tin Master, I'll just read the descriptions and loading. Years ago, uh, when, there, uh, when there were no modern technologies, cooking utensils were sterilized and renewed by uh, tinning. And I found one of the last masters of his profession, that's cool, uh, which is now exhausted and photographed in front of the shop and immortalized it. So we'll take a look here at this shot. Some loading. <clears throat> and so this is this is another shot for me, like the first one that we saw. That's a really powerful image. I love the composition in this. Um, I love how he's separated from all of his tin work. And just behind him is the door. Uh, his expression is really great. Once again, your expressions from your subjects are phenomenal especially getting this close to them with a wide angle, you, you clearly build relationship. The reflections in the window are really beautiful with the trees. And, um, and I, love, I love this type of black and white when um, it's taken at, at this time of day where, where light and shadow um, really plays a, a beautiful part in it. How do you feel about this one? Hi, sorry, I was messing with my windows, I'm trying to find the right one. I like this oh, one, but my yeah. other favorite 
one is the one with the clocks. Um, let's let's check it out. <clears throat> Watch me. One, yeah. I mean, I just think it's so interesting, like looking at these old clocks and how the man is. Um, I really like the framing um, with the clocks and the man. Um, yeah, his, his expression's great too, right? <laughs> And the dark clock on the edge, I think, is just perfect. Um, you know, the eye is really drawn to this center, the center two clocks, which are really the ones that are in focus. Um, I really like this one. Yeah, I think if it was all white clocks, it wouldn't be as powerful as composition, right? Because we have this weighted, his, his shirt is black over here on the edge, and then the, uh, or, or dark, we don't know what color it is because it's black and white, but it's dark here and then it's dark on the edge here. So it really, it really lends to a beautifully weighted uh, frame. And, and once again, uh, I like the expression on the man. I love the hands, uh, hands on the clocks. And it's, uh, it's another environmental portrait about what he does for a living. This is another really good one. Let's open up this. So, so some of the titles, Man in the Street, is like Man in the Street 1, Man in the Street 2, Man in the Street 3. Um, you know, they're a little direct for me, those titles. Uh, I like titles that are a little more open-ended, um, that make me think a little bit more of my imagination. You know, we know this is a man in the street already, so um, I'd work a little bit on the titling. You know, you, you clearly, you, you're good at writing. Um, one, day, one day, a man I saw in the street impressed me. His face was very characteristic, so I took this photo to immortalize him uh, in the street where he lived. Um, you know, so maybe like a, a man of character is an interesting title. You know, you said you say his face was a very characteristic, so man of character, or, or something like that, I think would lend to a, a better title for this image. So let's take a look at it. We can always change these titles and stuff too, especially if they're not sold. But yeah, once again, um, powerful expression, love the smoke and Surprising how the, it looks like the smoke leads all the way into the back to the, uh, you know, that's just an illusion, but it looks like the smoke leads all the way into the back uh, homes back there. But that's just because we have this really wide angle. And um, I think the composition is really, really well done here with all the uh, steps leading up and, you know, you know here too. Cool. Very cool. So yeah, we, we sort of have, you know, um, this, this portrait shot, which is, which is just a portrait shot, right? Um, we have this, this, uh, this man uh, smoking here, which is, um, which is more of an environmental portrait, but not, doesn't have to do with what he does for a living, right? And then we have, uh, and same thing with, with this shot here, I think. Take a look at this. This is Man in the Street 2. One day, I, uh, a man I saw in the street impressed me. His face was very... Okay, so you copy and pasted the same thing from the other one. So I definitely would not do that for a different photo um, of a different man. I would definitely make a new description on that. I think that's really good advice to, to go by. Because um, as, as a collector, you know, when you collect something that's a one of one, you want it to be different from something. I and mean, it has the same, same title here, but you're so good at these expressions and you're so good at these environments. So, uh, you know, I, I really like, I, I love the, uh, the little bracelet in his hand or whatever, whatever this is. Uh, and I love how a lot of your shots, these hands come to the, the front of the frame. Yeah. Yeah. I really love the, what he does with the wide he, he or she, um, does with the wide angle. It really, I mean, the things that should be emphasized really are, um, and I did want to comment uh, for a minute about the why hasn't it sold out. Um, and from my experience, I would say, you know, like you said, you need to keep promoting it, but also patience. Um, my first collection took almost a year to sell out. And there was some time that I wasn't talking about it and promoting it very much. And during that time, I didn't make many sales. And so then I thought, you know, as it got close to a year, 
I really want to sell this out. And so I refocused on, you know, talking about it every chance I had and, you know, tweeting about it and, you know, just really trying to push it again. And then I started making sales again. So I think that's a really important piece and, you know, not to give up and just let it sit there. And even if you release new work, you know, maybe pick a day of the week or a couple days of the week that you're going to promote that old collection and talk about that old collection or maybe focus on it for a month even. Um, but I think it really takes persistence and patience and making sure you don't just let it fall by the wayside. Perfectly said. Yep. And telling, just telling the story about it. Like we, we, we did open up the Twitter and saw that just a lot of posted images without, without a story or a description or even a link to the uh, collection. I mean, Twitter gives you a certain amount of characters to use, try to use up those characters. I usually try to use up those characters, um, you know, until, until I can't use them anymore um, within that post. And I think it's very helpful to, uh, to do that. Um, with that being said, yeah, I think we gave uh, some really great advice in this collection. And, um, you know, um, if you guys like the collection, please retweet it and let's get some more eyes on uh, the work for, uh, for Ramis because it's uh, some beautiful work. So cool. I think we can move on to the next collection, which is, um, which is uh, very different here. This is Combination in Art. This is by um, Gizem uh, Genk, G-N-C-C. I believe she is, she is a female, um, uh, and this is, I, I created a multidisciplinary study by combining photography and painting on the human face. Um, with the emergence of photography, the tension between the painting and photography has continued for years uh, in this collection, for years. In this collection, I wanted to show that painting and photography can be perfect when they come together. Um, you know, banner image, would love it to be a little bit higher up to see the images be more clean. Um, these are floor price of 0.1 and one ETH has sold. So it's really good. 43% unique owners, 61% um, of them are listed. Um, activity, let's check out the activity real quick. Wow, a recent, recent activity, really good. So um, this, this first one sold five months ago, then four months, three months, two months, a month and 18 days. So this is kind of what you've been talking about in the past, in the last one. Um, Arwen is about like patience and persistence. And um, I can I can guess that this artist is um is telling the story of the work and, and promoting it more uh, because we're seeing a consistent sales um almost each month and you know three in the last three in the last month, you know. So um really cool. You can see on the chart here, you can look at the um and it's 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 going up. So um congratulations on that. That's really cool. So let's take a look at the work. Um so, uh, you know, for first, uh, my first uh, reaction to the work is very unique, very different. Um, and there's some of these that I really love, and there's some of these that feel like they're, they try hard a little bit more. The ones that I really like are, like, look at this one, for instance. Um, this is very, very different and very, very, very abstract where it's taken to the point where it feels like it could be even an illustration waiting for it to load now. <clears throat> we need that like, uh, we need that like Jeopardy music right now. Whatever, however it goes. <laughs> Wait for this to load. I'm going to give it a few more seconds. If it doesn't load, then I'm just going to press command plus on kind of try to get as close as I can to the image. Open C, do something about this. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you press command plus and we can, we can move in a bit on the image here, but yeah, this one is, uh, this one is really wild. Like it's interesting. It looks like, it looks like the left side down here of the shoulders is, not painted and the right side is painted but you could fool me because maybe it's the other way around i don't know but it's just a really really abstract piece in the lo i love the painted necklace here and the color relationships are fantastic the teal with the brown with the, with the like the peach tones like the the, um, the beige skin tone and the yellow with the 
red. Um, that this is one of my favorites. If we go back, um, it, I have a lot more favorites too. But so if we just look at the top, let's just put it from oldest, right? Because that's how it was minted. So too many of these feel similar to me. There's just too many, right? So like for instance, um, you have this one that kind of looks like a board ape a bit um, with the hat, and then this one the board ape with the cigarette. I mean, I would choose one, right? I think you have too many images, um, and I think you can sell out faster if you give less options that are too similar. So, and then these two are very similar too with the lightning. One has the eyes closed and one with the eyes open. Um, I think I'm preferring the, uh, the, vertical, the vertical image uh, in, in that one. And then also two, two of these as well. You have a, you have a, a vertical uh, and you have the horizontal here. And I think maybe in this one, I even prefer actually the horizontal. So um, I think you have calling down that you, that you could do in this collection where there's just, uh, again, similar, similar, um, both really interesting shots. Um, but like this one really stands out to me. Um, it's much different than the rest, you know, and, it, and, and it's, once again, the color relationships are really fantastic. They work really, really, really well together. And I'm surprised that this is not one of the collected ones. But yeah, overall, I, I think it's really cool, really experimental. I love this one as well. I just think that there's a lot that are uh, are very similar from my first impression, and I don't know if you have the same thoughts. Um, I actually really like these ones at the top with the black background, and it was a little jarring when I scrolled down and saw the other backgrounds. I, I don't know, I guess I just expected it to flow a little more from all the black and then it just changed. Um, but after you pointed out, I do realize the similarities and I really love the vertical one um, that you mentioned of the woman. Uh, what is that? Is this one here? No, the top. Oh, uh, here. Yeah, I really love that one. What? Um, I love the way it says art on her neck and just every detail in it. I'm finding that I like the ones where you can actually see some of the person better than the ones that are completely painted, but that's just my personal preference. Um, so the only thing that really stood out to me was just the way it was arranged, and I know this is partly open sea. I was expecting to see, you know, more uniformity, and then it drastically changed as I scrolled down. I agree. I think, though, with 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 like taking out some of the images that are really similar to each other, there would be less black background ones, and then taking out some of the ones that are very similar to each other with the other colors. So there's 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 four sets of backgrounds, right? There's black, there's blue, there's teal like this tealish green and then there's one that has this purple so um yeah if if if, if you could call if you could call down on the images and just make it make make them you know for me i i i do like the differences in the in the background colors um i just would like to see uh i just would personally like to see less less images and just more of the most powerful ones. So like there's, there's 23 uh, items here and the floor price is 0 0.1. Um, and you, you, there's different prices, so 0 0.11, 0 0.13, so 0 0.15. So um, the artist believes that some of these are, I think, you know, when you look at the price and some of the other, I think it means that the artist either believes they are those shots are better shots, or maybe they, they took more work to more work to actually create. Um, but so how many how many have sold? Let's see. Okay, quite a few. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine have sold out of twenty-three. But so if you if you made this collection, drop this collection down to like fifteen. You'd have only six more for a start, um, and so that would be that would be my my you know my biggest uh, advice would be to call down uh, some of this collection. And let me look at the uh, questions. So the questions are: um, 
how do you determine quality when purchasing? Um, so that question, that answer for me is like, um, how do I determine quality is basically um, if I'm emotionally connected to something. Um, it, um, sometimes I'm not emotionally connected to something when I buy it just because I love the aesthetics, geometry, and how the composition falls into place too. I mean, I guess that's how I determine um, quality when purchasing it. It's the, if I have to feel something from it. Um, the other question is, um, first thing that stands out in my work, uh, first thing that stands out in your work is that you're very experimental and you're willing to push boundaries. Um, how, how to be more successful in NFT and get collectors to see me? I think collectors are seeing you because you you have a steady flow of sales throughout um, the months. Um, but, you know, it, in general, um, you know, uh, you know, share the work of others, you know, uh, share the work of your, your own work, but um, writing, I think writing is really important about um, your process, you know, why you, why, why you have action, what you do. I think collectors love to see this type of stuff. Um, you know, you can even find collectors that are into this type of experimental uh, stuff. There's collectors out there that collect specifically uh, work that's very experimental like this, and you can you can send a DM and you can say, hey, um, you know, I not notice you're uh, you're very into this style of work. Um, you know, this is my collection and this is what it's about. Would love to hear your thoughts. I think intention goes a long way when um, when DMing a collector. And so when I DM a collector, I I always go into it, um, you know, not trying to show my work, but to just show them my work and what my work is about. So um, I think that's a good way to become a successful in the NFT space, but also to find out, you know, what it is besides art that, you know, that your that your uh, that your strengths are, what you're really good at, and how you can um, how you can lend um, how you can lend that to the community in, in some way, right? So. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I really love talking about art. So, um, you know, well, the AMAs and stuff like that, Arwen loves talking about art and, and, and has many other qualities. So we, so bringing to the table what else you can do um, besides just creating the art and maybe you are, uh, but this is just, uh, this is just my, uh, my advice in the space just to, yeah, and to be nice to people. <laughs> so um, yeah, on those questions, Arwen, you have anything? Um, I have one comment about the collection, and then I'll go to the questions. Um, and maybe you already mentioned this, but I just noticed that some of the titles are the same uh, between the pieces. And so that might be a way, you know, to cull it down, I would think, is to, you know, just pick one with the same title. Um, I've never really seen a collection that has exactly the same title for multiple pieces. Um, and I think it would be better to differentiate them. I think um, that's really, really well seen. Thank you. No, go on, I'm sorry. As far as, um, you know, how to get collectors to see them, I agree with you that they are being seen. But um, it, in my opinion, like I said in the last one, it just takes time. So it's building, building, building. and. Even when you think they're not seeing you, they might be, um, and they're just waiting for the right time to buy it or the right piece that connects with them. Um, and so you just have to keep going and, you know, keep trying and it'll happen and it looks like it is happening for them. So, you know, that's great. Uh, and uh, the first thing that stood out for me was the creativity and the way this is so unique. Um, and, you know, compared to other things I have seen. Um, and for me, when purchasing art, uh, a lot of times it's, if it connects with me, I usually only purchase landscape and some cityscapes uh, I have purchased as well. Um, so it's mostly if it connects with me, but also sometimes I do research the artists a little um, just to see, like, you know, if they, you know, have been in the space for a while and if I think they'll still be here and, you know, maybe, you know, just their overall portfolio. 
Um, so I do think it's important, you know, I haven't looked at this particular artist, but I do think it's important to have, you know, like a link tree with all your links and, you know, to keep everything up to date so that um, people can look at other aspects of your work if they're thinking about buying. Absolutely. I look for the same things too. I think, I think longevity is a big thing and like what, you know, what they're doing in the space, right? Like if, if all, if, if their feed is only just them sharing their own work, um, you know, if they, if they, you know, if they, if, yeah, stuff like that. It's just like, uh, I, I definitely look at the risk, uh, a risk assessment too. Like I, I don't just, buy art i mean i'm in, i'm investing in people too right like so i invest in in people so i have to like the art and i have to like the people as well so that's a big factor for me so it's really important right like i'll give an example with sarah lindsay i purchased one from one of her first collections and it was before she was very well known in the space but i looked at her instagram and i saw what she was doing there i didn't really even know her at the time um, and I loved all the photos on her Instagram. And so, you know, I kind of do that a little bit, especially if it's a one of one that's a little more, you know, a little more pricey um, that I'm investing in. Absolutely. Yeah, I love Sarah. So yeah, well, stuff like that, exactly. Like, like she just so much for the community too. So it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, that is a big part in my, uh, in my process as well. Cool. Very, uh, really, really, really great points. Thank you so much for that. I mean, can you move on to uh, the next question? It's, um, it's Children uh, of the Far City. And this is by Haluk. And there's no questions. So uh, let's we'll take a look at the, uh, the collection here. Um, you know, Banner is uh, Banner's really interesting. I love this shot. I think actually this is one of my favorite shots in this collection here. It's on Sloika here, so we should uh, be able to move through these images better. Um, so Children of Refugee Families, uh, fleeing the immortality of their own country. It doesn't matter much to the kid, uh, but when he grows up, I would probably say when, when they grow up, you know, he, she, she we, you know, I would say when they grow up. And then I think there's a lot more that could be added to this description, actually. Uh, I'll take a look at the images. So um, there's six, um, and none of them have sold here. Not sure how long the collection has been out because it's very hard to figure that out on Sloika, but I think this collection has been out for quite some time. And so uh, let's take a look through um, some of the shots here. So this one is um, called COVID Days. The kids are on the street in the COVID days. He's a little nervous, but there's always a game. So I guess a little fear about COVID, but there's always some, some game or something to play. This image seems, a little, uh, uh, you know, composition is interesting. The, the the black and white is very flat to me though. It's very it's very flat. It's very muddy. I would try to punch the whites on this in um in in Lightroom or something like that and make this image pop. Um, I love black and white images that are taken um, in high contrast sunlight. Usually, this is black and white taken in a very cloudy day. It's a little bit harder to make uh, black and white images in this, but. You know, also some local adjustments, like, right, like I would locally bring out the face on this child more, you know, I would probably locally bring out, you know, the exposure a bit on this child more just by, you know, selecting just the child and bringing it out a bit. Um, yeah, um, that's, do you, as far as the editing goes and, 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 and how this, how this looks as a black and white, um, do you feel similar, Arwen? I mean, I like, I really like the composition of this with the two boys, um, the way they're set up, but I do um, feel like it's missing a little, you know, punch, uh, and I think that's what you're describing. Um, I think in a lot of the photos, uh, like particularly, um, what is it called? game in car, they're a little dark, like maybe too many shadows on the faces. Um, I feel like I can't really see them that clearly. Uh, I yeah, really I... love in snow, but maybe it's the same thing that it could have a little more contrast, um, something to spice it up a little bit, but I love the composition of in snow, the way the road is leading your eye to the kid. 
um, in these old decrepit, I don't know, they're like falling apart, these buildings. Um, that one's definitely my favorite. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it's such a good environmental portrait. The, um, the background's just incredible, right? Like, it, it's like they live within ruins. And like, I think that that's what this collection's description is about. And I think this shot lends to the description better than any of the other shots in the collection. Um, this has a nice punch to the background, right? It's just that um, something happens in, in, in the foreground with these children where I, I don't know if they're, a, if, if they're just a bit out of focus because um, it looks like you're auto-focusing or manually focusing behind them and the focus misses them. And so maybe you can shoot at um, an aperture that's higher than the one shot here. Let me see what, if, it, if that information is in here. It's not, but um, yeah, so like maybe, maybe you shot this at, you know, F2.8 and maybe, maybe if it was shot at 5.6 or F8 even, um, that we would have, you know, clarity throughout. And so then, um, you know, and, and I think that's where it gets a little bit, a little bit more, I don't know if the word is muddy or just less sharp on the uh, actual child. I don't mind it as much in this, um, you know, I could still see her expression and, st and, and stuff like that. And I, and I love it. Um, but I do think that, you know, you could work on some of your editing with local adjustments and also some of your settings in camera could be a bit different. <clears throat> Um, I love this shot. Um, I think this might be my favorite shot in the collection. Although, like, I do think that once again, um, it could it could use just a little bit more exposure. You know, just a little bit more exposure. And you know, per, uh, personally, I you know, I would have uh, in in editing, I would have selected these eyes. Um, you can select just the eyes in Photoshop, or you can even do it now in Lightroom. And I would bring just a little bit more punch to the eyes to see, see that shine. Um, yeah, but I, I love the composition here. Um, she's wearing a very dirty pajama shirt. Um, her face even looks dirty. You can, you can feel the conditions that they live in. And she looks so beautiful, though. Even dirty, it doesn't matter. She looks so beautiful. She has beautiful hair and eyes in her. And it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful but sad image. Um, and then I love the, I love the goat just in the background here, um, just, just, you know, up on, up on this sort of, um, you know, this, this mess of whatever is happening here. It's, it's, you know, not very organized. It's, it's like a sort of a, a cooler box or something like that that's been taped because they don't have, certainly have the resources to have um, higher quality things. Um, it's, it's a beautiful shot. <clears throat> Um, you know, interesting shot here. It feels a, a little strange in the in the. I'm, I'm looking at things technically a lot right now, but I do I do like the the, uh, the leading lines of the kids, right? Um, you know, I wish this this kid right here if it was shot a little and he was right in between the two. Um, but it feels like we we the, the building is blurry and, and it doesn't have clarity, but down here it does. So it almost feels like it was it was. It was uh, post edited to have like a shallow depth of field in some of the areas that don't really make sense to me. Do you see that or is it just me? I do see that. To me, it looks like he was probably focusing on the kid in the middle. And so that's why that one that is more uh, in the same, you know, field of focus. Um, sure. Sure, and so then that goes back I to the it's aperture. A little, it's a little jarring um, seeing that. I would rather see, I mean, maybe everything in focus because, you know, a part of the story is the buildings or the kids uh, in focus. I agree, and I, I think it goes back to what I was talking about before, technically with in-camera settings. And I think that this is shot at, like, 2.8 or maybe even a shallower depth of field than that and it, it looks like you're right it looks like this kid here in the middle is in focus and that's why this plane of view over here is is very detailed and i'd love to see all of this detailed in a shot like this and i think you acquire that by just bumping that 
um, bumping that f-stop up to um, probably even 5.6 could do it in this image. You know, if you have the light and the availability, um, shoot it at f8. You know, if this was shot on iPhone, um, right? I so, so you know, I I I, I had an issue. I, I I used to always shoot. If my if my lens was f1.4, I was always shooting an f1.4 no matter what. I felt like I paid for this lens. It's it's expensive. It it has a shallow depth of field. I'm always going to shoot at it. But now I I think about what I want my end result to be, and so I choose my aperture based on that. And I think the end result for this would have been um, better at a higher at yet a higher f. -stop. I think that's what it is. So I'm glad you pointed that out. But I think it's a, I still think it's a really interesting image of these kids playing within the ruins and this this game that they're playing. It looks like this. They're sitting on something that makes them slide. I'm just noticing that. Looks like a piece, like a like a paper, or a, not paper, obviously, but some some type of uh, some square that they can slide down this hill. Uh, where are these? It's beautiful because these kids they they are creating their own little sports or games. Uh, very interesting. <clears throat> yeah, another um, another another really really interesting composition and shot and. Um, you know, there's, I, I don't, I don't know if it would be better if this was shot at a faster shutter speed where there was, where some stuff was not blurry and out of focus, or maybe it works here. Um, uh, maybe it works that we can see the movement in this, but I, I like this shot. I don't know how, how far would you have anything on this? I like it. I like the way the kid on the right is a little blurry, um, so that you can see, you know, how they're playing. And, uh, I love the tug of war i mean i think i really like this one this one's really nice me too cool and i agree on this shot too on uh, this last shot i, I love that i love this shot i love that the feet are coming down from the top it's a very um it's a very like experimental uh composition it's a very it, it pushes boundaries in composition i agree though i want i want to see the i want to see these girls face more especially this girl on the left like she has a really beautiful smile coming out. And I think just, you know, bringing up those shadows, you know, bring up the shadows there and then you could even, you know, bump clarity just like a little bit. And sometimes clarity just brings a little bit of, of, of brightness and like punch to it as well. Um, and I think, yeah. So a lot of, a lot of their comments here seem to be on um, in-camera settings and, um, and, you know, um, and, and, you know, the, the actually post-processing. So, but the, but the, the images are powerful. So, you know, that's, that was my biggest thing there. Um, questions. Uh, yeah, this, this, this collection have no, uh, no questions here. And so, um, I, I'd like to just take a quick look at their Twitter. Yeah. The collection overall, I think is really great. It goes together well, and it really tells the story, um, you know, that they're trying to get across. It's just. Uh, those things in each image, I would agree with you on that. Yeah, it looks like they have it as their pinned tweet, you know. Um, uh, they're from the everyday lives of refugee children in my country. This is, I, I love the grid. I think the grid is really well done. with always like the symbol. That's really well done. This was posted on July 23rd, July, August, September, October, beginning three, four months ago. Um, on on this uh, post here, um, thanks for reposting about the AMA. Let's look at uh, let's look at media. Five hours ago, five hours ago, oh, it was a reply. Drop your NFT. Yeah, drop your NFT, but talk about it too. Um, uh, yep, two point five Tez in the link. Once again, you know, I see a lot of this just dropping images. I mean, talk, you know. I'll add the story. I, I like these a lot. I, I actually um, I think I own one of these on Object. See, in this one, this one, I, I like I like what you did here, right? Look at this. So, um, you know, in the evening after work, the journey home begins. Anxieties and trouble cast our minds along the way. Tired thoughts reflect on people's faces as well. Beautifully written. And look, you got you got three comments, two retweets, five likes on this one. The one above that, you didn't write anything. You didn't get any engagement. On this one, you didn't write anything. You didn't get any engagement. So just look at that, the fact that your writings are bringing um, more level of engagement. 
and I'll, I'll point this out. You're only posting your own work. Um, all of this media is just your own work. So, and this is a lot of times to post this one, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, share, share some from other artists, you know? Uh, share, because look, let's take a look. Um, you know, you have a following, or you have uh, 1,236 followers, right? You probably would have a lot more followers if you if you were retweeting other people's work and talking about other people's work, championing championing other people's successes. Um, you know, it seems like like you know it, sometimes it seems like well, oh, you are. I'm sorry. I was looking. I guess I was looking at your media. So yeah, beautiful done. So you are you are doing all that. That's my bad. But yeah, I would just yeah, I would just keep telling the story of the of your work and um and yeah and just uh, communicating with the uh, with the community. Very cool. <clears throat> um, hey, do you have anything else on that? On to the next collection. Nope, nothing else. Cool. The next collection is uh is is Rooster Feathers, um and this is by uh, Pervin Sate. And he just says, give a comment and rating of my photography. I'm not going to give a rating of your photography, but def we'll definitely talk about the work. Um, so Rooster Feathers, this, is, uh, this, is, this collection is unique and abstract. Every rooster has unique feather patterns. That pattern not showing directly, the, fe the feather patterns reflect multiple colors based on light. That is a different angle and different light settings. These all images are taken from my own rooster farm. That's cool. So he, own, he has a, his own rooster farm. And so I'm happy to see that there's only uh, one, two, three, four, what, six images in here because uh, in a chat space the other day, he shared the work and there was like 30 or 40 of these. And there was just too many. And there was a lot of them that weren't as strong as the ones that we're looking at now. And I'm really glad that the artist took the advice and called down the collection because it's looking really beautiful right now. Um, let's look at some of these. Because I had no idea that roosters had um, had these types of patterns and colors and iridescence and these colors like the orange. With, and, and this is created by nature, which is really beautiful that nature can create colors that um, correspond so beautifully together. And the composition's really interesting here. Um, crop, crop is interesting. It looks like a 16 by nine. Um, but if all the crops are the same, then that's a really beautiful, gorgeous one. I love this one very much. I love the negative space, the yellows. Um, yeah, this is a really, really cool experimental collection of the, the details of, of the roosters. Not seeing them, but just seeing what they're, uh, their feathers are. Um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not as crazy about this one as I as I, I am about the first uh, three that I looked at. I think there's something here to do with your your depth of field. It's a little bit backgrounds a little bit um, a little bit jarring, a little bit um, you know it's too, this this whole piece here with the white and and all of this here kind of takes away from what I really want to be looking at. And then there's details that I can't see because the uh, You said exactly what I was going to say, Mike, uh, <laughs> about that one. And then one thing I would comment, um, like about the first one you opened up, is I don't know. I, I mean, I love this collection. When you first brought it up, I thought, oh my gosh, these are beautiful. Um, they really are beautiful and amazing. Um, but I do feel like maybe if it was all in focus, I would like it a little better. I'm just feeling that way about a lot of them. Um, because they're the abstract patterns, I just feel like to be able to see the full pattern really add to it for me. Totally agree. Now, now, now looking at this, totally agree to that as well. The whole left portion of the frame is just um, a, kind of a blur. And there's so many beautiful details in this, right? So, but I think it's, I think the, the, the biggest one is actually this one to me. Um, that back, the background is just too much. And I, and I like, I think for the other ones, you're doing a lot of like kind of top down. And this one, it looks like you're going from like a forward angle. 
and I, I don't, I just don't think it, I think, I don't think it worked as well. Um, this last one looks gorgeous. I didn't even open it up yet, but yeah, like that's, that's really beautiful. I love it. Um, I'm not sure if I, I like how dark it is down here or if that's fine with me, but the image is, is really beautiful. The colors really, really go well together, stand out in the patterns, all pointing upwards. Um, great composition. Someone's knocking on my door. I'll be right One thing I did want to comment um, on this collection is that it is just numbered, you know, rooster, feather, number, or whatever. Um, and so I think even with abstract collections, you can give them names that really lend towards how you see the image. Um, so there's a really good example. Um, uh, Rachel, I have to, <laughs> I'm blinking on the name. I don't, she did this volcano abstracts. Um, and uh, they were all abstracts, just like this, but she named them after how they made her feel. Um, and the names were really impactful. Is it Rachel um, Wood? Rachel Wood, yes. Uh, yeah. And I think that really contributed to her success with the collection. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, actually, if you go up to the top, close this and go up to the top right, there's that volcano abstracts um, left. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. So these are all abstracts and they remind me of your rooster feathers, you know, they're completely different, but they're kind of abstract in the same way. Um, and she named them each with really impactful name, really impactful let's, title. And so I that. think even for abstracts, that's a really good strategy. Let's find that. Um, Sloika, you know what you know where it is? Is it on Sloika or Foundation or? Um, Foundation. Okay, Foundation. Yeah. She did um, them all as an auction. So probably if you go to her collections collection, right here. Yeah, yeah abstracts. abstracts. Nothing to see oh. here. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it's not on Foundation. I thought it was. Probably well, just show find that and we can go back to it. Uh, cool. Yeah, we can always go back to it. Um, yeah, it's, it's I like that you pointed out that um, it's not just about the abstract shots, but these these titles and the story that that they that she gave to it. I want to look into the too, right after this image. I love Rachel's work; she's great. Cool. Um, yeah, I just had to get the door. My uh, my cat's Juju's wet food came, so she was crying today. I was feeding today because yesterday I shared the eating dry food, and she was very very pissy. <laughs> Cool. And was there other questions here? Let's see. Um, no, let's just give a comment and rating on the photos. So yeah, I think we give uh, comments. Uh, so floor price is zero five zero point three. Let's see. Um, we have one at zero point five. It's actually the one we like the least. Um, we keep that one zero point five. So yeah, that's that, that's something to take into consideration. This one's 0 0.4, 0 0.35. Um, yeah, so there's there's a bit of a, you know, there's, there's a bit of price difference on some of these. Um, how, how do you feel when you see price difference? Collection, but not, not only that, but also the titles. Rooster Feather 1, 2, 3, 4. I think you come up with better pair of titles than that. And I think um, that's what you were lending to with uh, pointing out to Rachel's collection, right? Yeah, that's what I had mentioned. Um, you were getting the door, so you didn't hear me. Um, but I was saying that, um, yeah, I would like to see titles like, you know, rooster feather number five there at the bottom, maybe like flames or I don't know, it kind of reminds me of flames, you know, something like that. I don't know. You, of course, have your own titles, but I love number three. It's probably my favorite one. Beautiful. Um, really love the way it swirls up and around. Look at all the, um, 
look at all of the uh, here too. Um, lots of properties here, but I think you're missing the most important ones to me at least. Okay. Um, um, addition, one of one, right? That's a really important property. Um, artist, artist name, that's also a really important property to me. Uh, those are the ones that I, I always look to put and I always put for myself, dimensions, um, I put the, all this other stuff is good too. It's as many as you, you can is great. Um, but yeah, I definitely would have the, uh, the addition size in there because you, I know you have the addition size in the description, but properties could very well be the future um, metadata for um, blockchain. So I would, I would definitely focus um, those there. I want to talk really quickly about pricing. So, um, uh, Oh, is the price is the price high? Um, it, it's not a question from the artist, but it's a question to me. Um, and I, I usually don't like to talk about pricing, but um, if the artist has other collections and they haven't sold um, at, let's see, um, open CNFTs. So really the only thing they have on here is open CNFTs. And so let's take a look at um, created and see how many collections have been created. And so there's other collections. So Magic Moments with Palm Trees. And floor price is 0 0.2, but with, um, with, no, with no, um, no activity, no sales. And uh, large, uh, large Lightnings, and uh, also no sales. And this is 0 0.0. Okay, so this is, is this an addition? 25 additions. Um, and activity none sold. So, um, so then I will say that I do think that for the rooster collection, that the price is high from an artist that has no history in sales. And I will say that from a place of confidence, um, well, not a place of confidence, but a place of um, how I've priced my own work when I started to how the evolution of my, the price of my work has, has evolved, right? And so, um, some of my first works in the um, in in a in a hyper bull market were lower than these prices, um, and so I think it's a good idea to not go so high on the price and get a collection, um, you know, get activity on a collection and collection sold out before you incrementally raise, right? So like maybe your first collection is. 0 0.15, right? And then that collection sells out. Then your next collection is 0 0.2 or 0 0.25. Uh, and hopefully the evolution of the work is, is different or becomes better and such with the pricing and stuff like that. So um, I don't know if you think of that, but that's kind of how I look at it. Um, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit high for OpenSea for first collections, uh, in my opinion. But maybe there's patience too that's involved here that and they will Yeah, I mean, for me, I would say that, you know, the higher it's priced, the har harder it's going to be to sell. That's been my experience. So um, maybe, you know, it's kind of a balance between how long you want to wait and um, how much you want to earn. Like for me, I tend to price mine a little higher, but I don't have a huge portfolio. So, um, you know, I kind of feel like I have to do it that way, whereas some people price it lower and they sell faster. Um, that's what I've noticed. So it's really, you know, especially when you're starting and you don't already have a lot of, you know, a large collector group built up. Um, if you price them higher, most likely it's going to take longer. For sure, well said. Cool. So, um, yeah, that you know, I think we answered all the questions, and um, yeah, I, I you know, they, totally, you know, uh, love all the description and um, you know, just the name, you know, the titles. The titles are we definitely changed the titles. You could do all of this because this collection is is brand new and nothing is sold. You can fix anything, and 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 this artist is willing to do that because they they did that immediately after talk space. They pulled this down to a beautiful collection. And so now I would add in those, those important properties. We already have a lot of great properties, but add in those important ones. 
and um, and yeah, and um, you know, tell the story behind the work, and um, yeah, just be involved in the community, and especially great that you're involved in the community here while we're in this bear market because not everyone's here, and a lot of people did leave, and you're here, so cool. I'm ready to move on to the next collection. Um, next collection is called Moments in Time, and this is by Kuntal uh, uh, Singhvi. S-I-N-G-H-V-I, Singhvi, I think that's how you say it. Um, so the, the questions here is, um, is the work good enough or should I delist some? Don't hesitate to pull back punches. So um, artist is asking for a harsh critique and that's cool. Um, I like harsh critiques for myself. Um, views about one of one with no theme. So interesting question because when I looked at this collection, I noticed that there wasn't a theme. Um, and then there's a question on price. So let's take a look at the collection. So moments in time. Um, and maybe we don't even call it a collection because it's, um, well, it's, it's one of ones is what, 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 is, what they're really saying. So let's read the description. Um, I click photographs to share what I see, to preserve the moments that won't happen again and to get a chance to relive them once again. Moments in Time is a collection featuring some of the best moments encountered by me since my journey as a photographer began in 2014 which I was able to preserve in the form of photographs. So, sounds like um, photographers have been shooting for quite some time, um, about eight years, right? And uh, it looks like what they put into this collection from the sound of the description is a portfolio of their best works that are from different genres. So, um, the first thing you have to think about when oh, you do that. Right. Yeah. Uh, can I see them? Uh, actually, can you refresh it? Actually, I added a, 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 I think, a one piece and updated the banners also, like today evening only. Let me refresh it for you. Thanks for being here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks for asking to not hold back any punches because that's how that's how you help. Um, that's how it help the, helps the most, right? Um, did, did anything change? I refreshed it. Oh, here we go. Cool. Okay. So uh, you change this background here. Let's see. It's on. And okay, so description didn't change. And you've added you've added a piece. Did you remove a piece? Oh, I only added one. Actually, okay. I shot it yesterday only, so I minted it today. Okay. Cool. All right. So so let's take a look. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open up. Um, the, the shop that I think is the most powerful in here and that you have close to the lowest price. Um, Tranquil and probably Arwen, Arwen will want to talk on this. She's a landscape photographer. I think this is beautiful. Oh my gosh. Like I love minimalist landscapes and I love the colors, the composition in this. This is absolutely beautiful. Like all the detail from here, like the greens on purples, like what, what you like the landscape, Arwen? Yeah, you I don't totally have to. agree. <laughs> oh, so you don't eye, have to. <laughs> no, I totally agree. My eye was drawn to this one first, but of course I am always drawn to landscapes. Um, I really like the contrast of the green against the pink and blue. I think the color separation is beautiful. Um, and the smooth water, it's really nicely done. Um, Maybe a little right heavy, uh, but um, you know sometimes you can't avoid that. Like yeah. it a lot. Mm -hmm. Same. Really love it. I would like to comment um, while we're on the collection itself um, about collections of one-on-ones that are very different. Um, I know some people do do that, and they have success with it. They just have a place where they put their one on one of ones. And I started doing that too, but I really struggled with it a lot. So what I ended up doing now is creating, um, you know, my main struggle was it with it was how to promote it. Like, do I have to promote these each individually? Or isn't there a way I can promote them together? But they didn't go that well together. So what I decided to do was just make a couple collections 
um, that I put, they will eventually be 10, um, but I'm just adding them, you know, as I go. Um, and that's where I've been putting my, what I consider a one of ones now. And I think it's worked a little bit better for me. Since I started doing that, I've had better luck promoting it and I feel like I've had a few more sales. Um, so that's something I don't know, you might consider instead of putting all these things together. One other thing I'll say, and this is all from my observation and experience, is that I do think some of the artists that do best in the space kind of have a consistent feel among all of their art. And I know some people like to experiment. In fact, I think, Mike, you're one of those. Um, but, uh, and you've done very well. But I just think maybe, um, I don't know, for me, trying to be a little more consistent, I think might also uh, help with your success. I think that's a great, great advice. And, you know, I, yeah, I, I have experimented and I have minted different things. Um, and I think, you know, if I don't, were to look back, I probably wouldn't have minted all the things that I've minted and I probably would have kept a more consistent feel to the type of thought I am. And I do think that the people that have that feel as an artist where you could look at their work without even seeing the name, and say, oh, that's a, you know, that's a, that's an Arwen piece. I know it is because that's the way that she sees the world. I think that that's a really big part of being an artist and also a really big part of being um, a successful artist. So when I look at this, um, this grouping of images, and I'll call it a grouping of images rather than a collection, um, it, uh, it looks like you are shooting sort of all different things. Like um, you're sort of like me. I, I, I love the world, right? I love the world and I like, I like, I like everything about it. And the, the great thing about photography is that, um, is that we, there's everything you can see, you can photograph. Um, but as you photograph for a long time, it seems like you have been photographing for a long time. And this is the type of collection where I usually like to pull up a person's Instagram because I'd like to see what they've been photographing for a long time. Um, and so I'm going to do that uh, if we if we have a link to it. Let's let's see if we have a link to the Instagram. Oh, there is. Here we are. So let's take a look. So you posted 363 posts. You have more posts than me, so we can get a good idea. And I'm, what I'm seeing so far is that the landscapes you've pinned, like, like that's beautiful. That's really cool. Yeah, that's, both of those. Yeah, so um, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, the monkey shot's beautiful too, right? So, um, you know, and, you know, and, you know, you're, your wildlife stuff's pretty beautiful as well. So for me, um, you need help in curation um, and understanding what you're really good at. Like that's another beautiful shot. So um, as I look through this, the ones that stand out to me are the landscape shots. Um, they are. This is pretty good. I think it would be better with, with, with somewhat of a subject, but the, the water is beautiful, the tonality. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, because I'm a curator and I've been doing this for a long time, I could literally go through your Instagram and I could put a body of work from your Instagram together and create something a lot more collectible than I think we have. Um, and I think we have here, right? Um, you uh, just... Mike, uh, can I say something? Go ahead, please. Yes. So the, uh, you know, the thing, uh, I, uh, I was uh, photographing for eight years on my phone. So I was not able to purchase a camera. So I feel like the photographs that I shot uh, on that, uh, on those eight years, you know, they lack a certain quality. So now I have purchased the camera just uh, three, four uh, three, four months back. So now what I'm trying to do is uh, make a collection of high quality images. And uh, uh, so the thing is, I don't have uh, the, uh, 
you know the, that many images of high quality that i can put in sim, uh, different collections so that's why i'm trying to make this one with uh, all the recent shots yeah i think though i think though that this that this is holding you back by not having a cohesive collection when you could have a cohesive collection i think i think that you clearly understand composition and moments and photography but i think that i think that you should put a landscape collection together um have you done this before uh, i tried to put to one uh, name L ladakh diaries uh, ladakh is a place in india so uh, i i'm into nft since last year and that was my first collection but uh, it, uh, it was lacking a bit of quality it uh, just, uh, one piece was sold but i have now uh, like uh, put it on hold like i don't feel like it should be you know the work i'm putting out yeah um well you asked for a critique where to hold back no punches right and so um you know let's look at this limbs of the forest <clears throat> You know, I, I, I enjoy this, you know, I, I really do enjoy the detail on this. I mean, it is all one color. It would probably work a bit better if there was more of a color contrast, but I do enjoy the detail and stuff in this. And, and I think this could possibly go in a collection with this, with Tranquil, um, but the rest fit outside of that. So this new one that you listed, I think it's one of the weaker images in here. And I think that, you know, for you, I think that, it, that you probably believe that it's strong because the composition is is really is really well thought out, right? I mean, you've created um, you've created a frame within a frame, frame within a frame, and then almost a frame within a frame. Over here. You didn't quite catch this frame within a frame over here, and maybe if you did, it would be different. Um, but there really, for me, is not much of a of a story in this shot other than it is an event, but I don't know what this event is about. Um, let's look at some of the other ones. Um, this one you've listed for really cheap, 0 0.786, free, uh, free, uh, Freeman, right? A lot more than the others. It, this, that's a lot cheaper. Oh no, that's more. I'm sorry. I was thinking 0 0.07. This is one of the least strong ones. Yes. So I was a little surprised that it was listed the highest. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought it was 0 0.07 um, uh, or so, and I, I do believe that too. I think compositionally, um, you know, they're not looking, they're not looking the right direction for me. Um, they're looking in the direction to the right. And so it's strange because they're, they're looking into the, the, the right board, end border of the image where the image ends. So we really don't know what they're looking at. So it's hard to create a story with this image, right? Um, the background. Uh, like, the thing is that uh, this uh, image uh, it uh, resonates with the uh, my favorite uh, novel, uh, Dune. So I have mentioned that that in the description actually. It's a, a storyline within the book. Uh, the image is for that only. From the from the from the book Dune. Yeah, I, um, I, I still need to be a strong image, and to me. The people are crowded in the bottom right, and the whole top half of the frame doesn't really have anything in it. Um, so it's just not as strong of an image for me. Same. So, I, yeah, so, you know, descriptions could be very strong, but the image also has to be as well. And they're also very dark. They're very, very dark. Um, so I don't, and, you know, when you want to create a dark silhouette, I think that the figure has to have some uh, some type of aesthetic to it that that silhouette makes sense. And these are these are these silhouettes are a bit jumbled and they're just a bit dark and, it, and it's it's hard for me to connect to the, to that to that image. So um, hard for me to connect to that one. Also hard for me to connect to the first one. These three tranquil limbs of forest snacks on the go. I could connect to these. Um, and let's open up. Destiny arrives um, all the same. Um, you know, you, you got a nice, you got a nice sunset here. Um, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the the composition though, because like once again, he's he's walking out out of the frame, and you know, it's silhouetted. We can't really see much of the uh, the figure, um, and it's it the 
I guess the environment and the figure together, it's hard for me to lend the story to. I don't know if you have something better to say than, than that for Arwen. I mean, I think if he were on the left to where the sun is walking into the image, it would be much stronger. And also the sun would kind of draw the eye to him. Right now your eye is kind of competing between him and the sun. Also the clouds and the sun are a bit overexposed. Um, it's not one of my favorite ones of the bunch either. Sure. And so, like I said, if, if, if it was, if it was me, you know, and I, and I went into your Instagram, um, like, is this listed? Cause this is strong. Um, is this listed? Cause this is strong. Love that first one. Yeah. I mean, you have, you, you have, you have some stuff within landscape and, you know, that's, that's a beautiful shot too. I think it could use a little bit more exposure. It's a little dark. Um, on my screen, at least. You know, this is interesting that walking through the field, like in bags, maybe there, maybe it's, it's it's raining. It's another image. It's a bit dark for me. I don't know if it's my screen or not. Normally, my computer screen split the sprays things brighter though. But so, like an image like this, you know, beautiful, but it lacks a subject. So I think a subject is needed in here. But you know, if I think if I look through these, like like this is this is this is kind of beautiful. This image, you know, it's it's like, um, you know, I would I would definitely reconsider your um, your one of one collection with um, with a collection of uh, of images that um, that make more more sense in, in a in a sense of landscape. Yeah, and I understand that what you're trying to do is just release your one of ones, but if that's the case, maybe not put as many there. Like you could, you know, release a few landscapes that go together well. Um, and then, you know, once they're sold, uh, maybe release some that are a little different. Um, might be one idea since you said you don't have a lot of photos that go well together. Um, maybe just release them a little more slowly and try and make them uh, uh, flow into each other. So even if it's not a landscape, let's say you released um, Tranquil, is that what it's called, first, and then yep. you released the forest one, which I really like because you've got a really good um, focal point in that forest. And forest scenes are so hard to photograph but I love what you did with that main branch leading from the front out into the forest itself. I think this one's a really strong image. Um, and so like maybe if you released Tranquil and the forest one, because they go really put well together. And then, you know, maybe you have something else that has green and blues in it, even though it's not a landscape. If you release that next, it might make it flow a little better into that. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. Is is that you don't have to when it's one of ones, you don't have to release um, six. Just because you give people more options doesn't necessarily mean that you you can create more sales because they have more options. I think sometimes just giving less options that are more cohesive or less options that are just more powerful images is a better way to bring in your first collector on foundation here for this. And the other thing I like about that, I mean, you want enough so that the collectors have a choice and they can identify with it. But the other thing I like about releasing fewer one of ones at a time is that you can really focus on promoting those ones that you've released. Um, you know, just keep at it, keep at those ones over and over and over. Um, and it's a little bit easier, in my opinion, to do that and tell the story of those individual pieces. Yeah, so if it was like tranquil limbs of the forest, um, you know, maybe this, maybe this shot here, I don't know if that fits or not, but you know, this shot is really beautiful. Um, you know, and you, and you, you went with that and then you started bringing in, you know, some wildlife stuff. Then I think that would make, um, a lot more sense. I mean, even the shot like this is pretty good. I mean, it could probably be a little more punchy on the edit, but. Yeah, I, I think if you went in that direction, I think you'll have more success. And I think that's all I really have um, for this. 
Yeah, uh, one more comment I'll make is the top left one on his Instagram would kind of lead into some of the ones that aren't landscapes because it's a little more abstract and it's a different color. So, you know, if he put that like third um, after those two that I had mentioned, then he could kind of bring in some of the ones that weren't landscapes that had similar tonality in them, I think. I agree. I think, like you said, this shot to this shot, and then that first shot on the Instagram with all the birds in the, in the water, or, or whatever the swans or whatever they are, um, is, a good, is a good leading into a new type of work, you know, and that's, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I think that's the best advice that, um, that I can give. And I think that Arvin gave some really, really great advice as well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for the time. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here. Not a lot of the artists come up and speak, so I appreciate that very much. I have to step away for a quick minute, but you can continue and I'll be right back. Sure, sure. Cool. So, um, going on to the next collection, if this is, uh, this collection is called uh, Kiev, Ukraine, and I believe Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. My, my girlfriend is from Ukraine. Um, and uh, this is by uh, Jakob Jenner. And the question is, um, is it important to make a first sale quickly? Uh, what is missing in my collection? Um, why am I not noticed? Um, and how do I move forward in the market? So I guess I'll touch on the first question while Arwen's stepped away so that she can talk about the actual work with me. Um, is it important to make a first sale quickly? Um, not necessarily, but it's, it's, it's not a bad thing, right? I mean, part of making a first sale quickly has to do with a lot of the work, that, a lot of the work that, that goes into before releasing the collection, like getting eyes on that, that piece that you want to sell uh, from honest people that you, you trust in the space um, and, and for them to, you know, reiterate that, yeah, this is a great piece. And, you know, maybe someone there will even say, I'm interested in purchasing this piece. So, you know, before I drop my collections, like I have collector chats and people, you know, or, or I'm even showing pictures to my girlfriend and saying like, you know, which, she's not an artist, but she's been right up at a lot of things. And, and I'll show it to her and I'll say, you know, is, you know, what, what do you, what do you think's weak? Short 10 images, like what's weak in here? You know, like what's the strongest, you know? And then you know, I get an idea. I'll go to my collectors or, or whoever, whoever you have, you know, maybe you don't have a, maybe you have some friends who say, hey, I'm trying to put this collection together. What, what it were, you know, what is the strongest pieces here? And they, you know, you'll have a consensus on that, but it should also feel like a really strong piece to you. Um, and so with that, you know, I, I you know, I don't think it's in, super important to have a first sale quickly, but it definitely helps um, create momentum um, if you do, right? So, um, you know, why, what question, why am I not noticed? Um, you know, we'll go into that um, after we look at the collection, we'll check out Twitter or something, and then moving in the, in the market, moving forward in the market, we'll get to that as well. So, um, so, Collection nine and it's, it's the description just says nine NFT photo from Kiev, Ukraine. It's just it's just uh, you're just telling us like stuff that we already know, right? The titles Kiev, Ukraine, um, and I could just count nine of them. So it's not really a description. Um, I would I would talk about like what it is about Kiev, Ukraine. Um, that has you drawn to these images. What what are you trying to show about Kiev through these images? A little bit there in the description would be nice. Activity um, shows um, no activity. Uh, I'm gonna put these. I'm gonna list these from from first oldest to newest. Um, and let's take a look since this is the oldest when five months ago. Was listed at 0 0.05. It's still 0 0.05. Um, something that confuses me here is this. It says this quantity of 
25. If there's a quantity of 25, then how are, how are 50 owned by the artist? Um, that right there alone in itself would cause me as a collector not to collect um, because I would just move on to a different collection um, to look at collecting because it would take a lot of work for me to DM you and I can't DM you even because I, I, I don't know where to find you actually. Um, I wasn't able to leak you. Um, we go to your name on here. Um, you have nothing here. Um, you have no Instagram, you have no Twitter um, or anything like that. So I, I don't know how to find you. And so just wanted to point that out that if there's 25 pieces, then how could 50 be owned by you? And is that listed somewhere? It's not listed in the description. The addition size is here. There's no properties that explain how many additions there are. So there's a confusion between 50 versus 25. So with that being said, um, let's take a look at the, uh, the collection here. Um, you know, the ones that stood out the most to me um, had elements that filled the frame um, and felt like they had more going on and more of a story. So Motherland, um, this one stood out to me because you really filled the frame in this um, from whatever this is here, whether it's a fountain structure, I'm not sure, leading into the statue. Um, and it looks like a, it looks like a, a stormy background here with, a, with a, you know, yellows and blues, which go really well together. It's a very moody image and you have the city off to the right here. It's a very well filled frame. So um, if I look at that and then I go to something like back to St. Nicholas Roman Catholic Church, um, uh, this, this just doesn't seem as sophisticated as a photograph as, as the last one I looked at, right? Like I look at the last photograph and I know what you can do. And then I see this photograph and I, I say, I think to myself, well, you know, what, like, so the subject is the church. Right, and it has interesting architecture, but like you have a you have a, a power line here that really hurts the frame. You have power lines coming through the bottom, a tree. Like maybe if you step back or used a wider angle lens and you showed some story happening in the street, that there would be something to this image. But I think this is the weakest image in the, in the set. And I think the first image I pulled up is the stronger uh, image in the set. Um, let's take a look here. Um, this is a NSC Olympia, Olympia ski. That's how you say it. You know, once again, um, when I see an image like this, where you can create a full composition and like this has the meat and potatoes, like, right, that we're looking for here, right? You have this dome and it looks like a soccer field. Um, and this color and this shape really stands out from the rest of the city and it leads into the city. And that's another strong shot for me compare it to, to, to the rest. So let's open another one. That's not as strong for me, right? This shot one, it's very dark. Um, first off, it's very, very, very dark on my screen. Um, and you know, I'm looking for like, what is the subject here? Right. And there's a nice light on the building, but, and there's two cars, one in which I really can't even see at all because it's so dark and there's another car here. Now, if you have cars in the frame and you want the car to be the subject, you know, it's really hard to do unless you have some really extravagant looking car, like something, something nostalgic, like an old classic car coming through the scene. And it'd have to be lit a lot better than this, right? Um, or, you know, there's, or just, frame like this with, you know, some story happening in the street because there's, you know, the, the lower half of the image here is just really dark and I don't know what's happening. And once again, the composition with this pole here, um, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, work well. So um, in some of these images, you're making really good compositions. You know, this is a, this is a good composition as well. Um, you have the symmetry. 
but the subjects are just far away, right? Like, you know, imagine you were more patient in this space and you waited. And there weren't just all these people back here, but there was someone closer here. Maybe they're riding a bike. Maybe they're walking, uh, holding a couple walking, holding hands. You need to, so you first can find your, your canvas, right? So this is your canvas. And then now paint the picture, right? Wait for, wait for, the, wait for the elements to happen, for this to be a, a, an image to either that or, or if it's just about structure, then the people in here take away from it. Are you back, Larwin? Maybe not yet. Yes, I'm back, and I totally agree with you. Um, actually, if you flip to the other view in OpenSea, this collection does look really nice together. Mm -hmm. um, but the ones you've said are strong and weaker. I totally agree on everything. Um, the mother, what was it called? Uh, um, yeah, motherhood, motherland. Motherland and the stadium one, those two stood out for me as like, wow, you know, these are really, wow. Yeah. Um, and then for me, one of the weaker ones is the top left, uh, some, T-S-U-M, oh, um, I don't know uh, how to say it. Because this one, oh, I mean, the building in the background is really intriguing, but the stuff on the left, and it's the same thing with the power lines, it, the car is very busy. Um, so I kind of felt the same way, you know, about quite a few of these. Um, but I like the idea of the collection, if there were a little more description, and I really do think they, like, when you first pull them up, it's a stunning collage. Yeah, it's just that when you get closer into some of the photos, you realize that the artist is really great in some of them. And then I just don't think he's creating um, strong enough images that compete with the other ones um, that are strong and just adding some that feel like fillers. And I don't know if you were here when I was talking about the fact that this here says it's a quantity of 25, but 50 are owned by the artist. Do you understand how that works? It's confusing well, I guess, to me. Um, they must have only listed 25. So I don't know if they're holding the other 25 for airdrops or of something for something else, but it would be nice if they would say that. Like if they said 25 yeah. listed and I'm going to hold 25 for airdrops, um, then that would explain it. Yeah, we have no information, right? Because the description just says collection of nine NFT photos from Ukraine, Kiev, which is not a description because, like I said, the title is create a U Kiev, Ukraine. So we know that and we know that there's nine images here. So what, um, you know, uh, you talk about, you know, talk a little bit about, what, like I said in earlier, like why Kiev, why these scenes within Kiev and, you know, also like, you know, you have to talk about like these are additions and stuff, right? And some of these aren't listed. Like this is um, this is quite beautiful too. The colors are really great. Um, you know, I, I think it. I still think it kind of lacks a subject. I mean, it, 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 it's you know, it, it is beautiful the, the the monument or statue in itself and the reflection. But I think that probably find a a subject. But I definitely think it's better than some of the ones that we looked at with the power lines that were obstructing and stuff like that so yeah i think that one's nice the one you just had open um i kind of wish the reflection wasn't cut off at the bottom um and uh i definitely agree that it's not as strong as the other two but i feel like if we had more of a description of the collection and we understood more why um, he chose this one for the collection, I mean, there is a description on it, but the overall description of the collection, um, it would lead towards it being understood more. Yes. And they also chose Polygon E, I think. So I don't know if they're promoting on Polygon or anywhere. I can't find the artist at all because um, it, there's no there's no information on there. They have no Twitter link, no Instagram link, nothing like that. And you definitely want to have those things. A collector is going to collect from you. They're going to want to look at some of that stuff. So let's look at the other questions. The questions are, 
Um, I already answered like important to make the first sale quickly. Like yes and no. It's just like and what is missing in my collection? Um, why am I not noticed moving forward? You're not noticed because there's no eyes on you because there's no I I, I can't even retweet your work. I, I, there's no links to any of your any of your stuff. Um, and you didn't provide any of that in the, um, when you applied for this, you just gave us the link to, um, to open C and just ask the questions, um, and moving forward in the market, um, you know, I think we touched that on, on that and some of the other collections, like, um, you know, you know, uh, tweeting other people's work, quote, tweeting other people's work, um, figuring out how you can help within the community to support web three. Um, you know, having the links, having the links to all your stuff, creating a link tree, um, writing stories about your work, you know, so that, I don't know if you have anything else for them. No. Okay, cool. I think we can move to the next collection. This is, um, this collection is called, um, my with colors. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, um, if that's typo or just um, a language barrier, but I'm not I'm not understanding the title. My with colors. This is by um, M. Barak uh, Inislar. Uh, they say, "How is the collection? Do the colors match?" That's the uh, only question there. Sorry to interrupt. Um, I think it's a typo because in the URL, it's my dance with colors. Yeah, so yeah, I'll definitely add that my dance with colors. That's actually a nice. So in this collection, I present the frames I have seen and documented. Each frame contains a different place and person. I wanted to touch the lives of my objects, lives of my, I wouldn't call them my objects, right? Because they're people, uh, to listen to them, uh, to be with them. And I succeeded. I wrote my reviews and what they did and all kinds of other information under each frame. I wish you to read and understand them. Each person is a world and each world contains a different story. Maybe you have a chance to find yourself in their, in their stories. I definitely like some of what you said in this artist statement, but I would get with someone that could help you a little bit with um, writing this better because I think you have it with good intention. Um, and so, yeah, I'm gonna work on that a little bit. Um, so let's take a look to see what they're listed at. 0 0.11, 0 0.08. There's only one of them at 0 0.08. It's strange to have one photo that's less than all the other photos. It just brings your floor price down for no reason. Um, look at the photos. Though. I mean, the photos are beautiful. The one I want to open up like right away when I take this is the shot puzzle. And there's a large description here. Um, I'm going to read the whole description. Well, let's take a look at the other photo. That's up to, up to open C. If they're going to let us. Were you talking? I couldn't hear you for a little while. Yeah, I was. Um, I Yeah, I just. I just, I, we're just going into the pictures now. I think the pictures are really beautiful. Can you hear me now? Marwin? Yes, now you're loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying that, um, you know, the, the uh, artist statement, there's some beautiful intention in the artist statement. I think it could just use a little bit of help from someone that can help them with the language barrier. Uh, and then just going to look at the pieces. The pieces really speak for themselves though. I think, I think the pieces are really beautiful. Like. This perspective here on puzzle is quite amazing that you're below and he's putting these pieces together. I don't, I don't know what he's building, um, but it, it's really, really, really interesting perspective on this shot. Like, oh, wow. Maybe we should look at them like this because it's, 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 it's kind of big. I love them like that. They the collection looks really nice like that. My favorite one is um, what's it called? Shoot, I had it here a minute ago. Of course, I just wow, this is beautiful. Pestle, pestle. one with this that's, one. That's funny. I opened it. I I I, I, 
that's the one I was opening because I was like, wow, this is just beautiful. Yeah, do you do you know what do you know what's happening here? We read the description. It looks like he's laying out some kind of cloths or something. Yeah. Yeah, so pestle, it's an event that starts locally. After the grape juice is squeezed, it is made into a paste by boiling and then laid on a flat cloth, which, which, which is a flat structure. And then the liquid paste is dried and prepared uh, to be eaten after drying. This is a very useful product. Interesting to have one of, uh, one, of one in here. I would just put the artist's name. Um, but wow, like, you know, really, really great documentary. I love it. I love, I love probably every shot. Um, let's take a look at this one, though. I think My there's fault. some that aren't as cohesive in the collection, though. Like this one and then the yeah. one kid with the horse. They just don't feel like they fit into the collection as well. Yeah, I agree. While this is a beautiful photo, it feels more of like a fantastical sort of magical fantasy scene. Um, it feels a little bit less like documentary, but I mean, it could still be. It's just, um, yeah, it feels yeah, it feels different because a lot of these are about the work that people do. But I mean, so is this though, I guess. Um, yeah, but this this shot here, um, this. While it's a beautiful photo, I don't feel that it fits because it's it's not. I feel like the other photographs are more about um, the people and the people in their environments, and this is more of like a silhouetted landscape shot. Like this works really well. It's, what is this tobacconist? I think all the ones that have like patterns in what the people are doing really go well together. Maybe that's what's making me think that the kid with the horse stands out a little bit because like this has the patterns of the leaves and the patterns of the thing on the roof. Yeah. And, like a lot of them have these recurring patterns um, that just really make them cohesive. Yeah, this one doesn't have that. I don't think it's that strong of an image compared to his other work either, to be honest. I don't think the kid's expression works here. And I think composition's a bit weird and so is the depth of field. So that one, I would probably, you know, you know, I would probably lose that one. Um, you know, and while this is a beautiful picture too, it doesn't feel like it belongs, right? The land of balloons, like gorgeous shot. I think it's probably Cappadocia or whatever it's called. Yep, yeah, Cap Cappadocia, land of balloons. Beautiful shot, but I mean, I'd probably try to just sell it as a one of one. This one, I would, I, this collection, I would keep more focused on like these, these people within their like work environments. I think that, I mean, even I guess this fits too. I mean, I don't know. It's like it doesn't, it doesn't. It has that pattern aspect that you're talking about, but it it doesn't really have the aspect of like the working, the working, the working class person, right? Because a lot of these do working class, working class, working class, working class, you know? Um, so yeah, this feels a bit like like. I, I would probably call this down to the, to the people that are just working in the field in which they work that have these patterns that are so beautiful. This is great. Shot beauty. Oh my God. I agree. I feel like the top left one could stay or go. It. I feel the same way about it. But then those other three, kid with the horse and the kid, um, See the kid with the horse and the kid that's just standing with the statue or whatever it is in the background. Um, I think it's his father. This one. And then, yeah, and then the silhouette. I mean, they might even go nicely together in a different collection. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I see two collections here, um, and I see all really great work. Um, aside from the one that that stands out to me to, to not be as strong is really this one. Um, and like I said, it's because, like you said, statue, and I think that's part of the problem here is that the depth of field, I think the depth of field is just too shallow here. Like, I, I'd, I'd love to see this, um, you know, shot at F5.6, F8, F11, probably not, probably not F11, probably F8, you know, um, so that we can see everything that's happening. Like, it looks like this is like, I don't know, some type of device that cuts, um, you know, grass or 
or, or chips wood or something. I'd love to see that. And I'd love to see all this stuff that's happening here. And I'd love to see his father up here. Cause like, it's just a, it does, it doesn't feel like it could be a statue. And what's this line coming down off of him? We can't really tell. So it's a week. That's the weakest shot in the collection for me. Um, and I, I think, I think it's great advice to keep those, the patterns of the working people in here. I think it's a gorgeous collection. I think it's photographer's really, um, really great photographer. There's so many great photographers in Turkey. It's just crazy. Like up here looks, this looks pretty good up here, right? Like the, the banner looks really nice. It has a lot of those. Um, so what was the other questions? Was, how does the collections do the colors match? Yeah, the colors, the colors do really well together and the, the compositions and the, and the, and the, um, you know, the, just the wide angle, beautiful, beautiful shots of, of the documentary. Yeah. Um, and no sales here. Let's see um, if we price it from oldest to the Luna collection's been around. Here, oldest. This is the first one that was minted. This is two months ago. They're lowering the price from 0 0.15 to 0 0.11. And any sales still in the collection? No, no sales in the collection. Let's take a look at um, no Twitter link here. But this is uh, this is M Barack. I think I have his Twitter. I know I follow him. There, there, there it was. A new edition. He's focused on this edition right now. They're retweeting his work with the coin, CD, media. His um, header banner is a little odd. That's my something. I mean, that would be oh. a good place to advertise some of his work. It says no activity to show yet. No auction office. I think that must be some mistake. Um, one thing about this photographer I do notice is that they, they meant a lot. Uh, they have a lot of created collections. Like... There's just so many, and there's so many collections that have no volume and that are very different from each other. Uh, and I know I talked about um, this the other day that, like, that I would probably, um, you know, another another collection with no volume here, and and the work's great. It's just that you just you're just over minting, you know, just don't like. But try how how can you like like this collection is a lot weaker than than your other collections. I would you know if with open C you can, you can get rid of some of this and you can cover some of the mistakes. I think there's mistakes in over minting, um, and and there's just um, you know your ability to kind of step back a little bit. Um, you know this 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 collection has um, has some sales right. So there is one sale here, but like five months ago. And so um, how can you focus on all of these collections at once? It's just too much. It's too much. I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to talk about all of this, you know? Um, so that's, you know, my biggest advice is just you, you, you're over minting work. You're giving, you're giving people too much to choose from. You're a really amazing photographer and just stop giving people so many options and just go slower and be more patient. I don't have anything to add to that one. Nope, I don't have anything to add. Great. Um, so we'll move on to God of Fire. Okay, so this is additions. Um, God of Fire. The question is, does it work as an addition? And then the, another question is, I got six pre-sales for 0 0.02 ETH. Should I public mint at 0 0.03 or 0 0.025? I don't know. That's negligible. Those prices, that, that, that price difference is negligible. I don't really have an answer for that. Um, I don't know, public release for a little tiny bit more than the, the pre-release, I guess. Um, and let's just see how the activity's gone. 
Uh, pretty good so far. Four sales in um, just, uh, just about one day, 16 hours ago, 19 hours ago, a day ago, a day ago, just about a day or two. Let's take a look. With three, if I were him, because um, gives your pre-sale buyers, you know, a little bit, makes them feel a little bit better because um, other people are buying it a little bit higher. 0.025 doesn't really seem like much of a difference at all. That's a good point. That's a really good point that I didn't think about. Um, let's read about Garter Fire. A Garter Fire, also known as uh, uh, Kandaran Kalan uh, Thayam, in traditional words in Kerala, India, uh, Thayam is a performing art ritual conducted in families, family temples in the northern part of Kerala, India, and has originated about 1500 years ago. The art form involves fierce makeup, headgear, and fire during performance, and is considered as a form of worship in a particular deity of the temple, the main god of the tribe, fa um, family that follows the same. In the uh, Kandaran Kalan Thayam, the artists wear makeup, headgear, and dance according to the rhythm of drums and cymbals. The final act happens when the artist jumps several times through the, uh, through the fire of fire and transforms into demon, uh, I'm sorry, not demon, I'm sorry, demigod, and blesses the devotees. I've captured this image in March 2022 at Kinar Kerala. It has information about the artist, dimensions, and the license. 0 0.08. So, you know, I'll, I'll say one thing. Um, I don't, this is ERC, what? This is ER details. This is ERC 721. What ERC 721 does is it, puts all the additions out like this. I'm not a big fan of that. Like that's, that's just me. Um, I, I like to put my addition out as an ERC, what is it, 11, I'm gonna say the wrong thing. 1155? Yeah, I think it's 11, 1155. Uh, because then, you know, then there's just one image and because and to see it over and over again is a little, it's a little jarring to me. Um, let's open it up though. Um, but when you do your ERC 721, you do get this four out of 15, uh, five out of 15, six out of 15. Some people do do really like this um, the image. Um, it's definitely, definitely a beautiful and compelling shot. Right? Fire looks like it, he looks like he's literally on fire. Like the fire is going right into him or her, uh, whatever it is. It's, it's a really interesting expression. And it's a, it is a beautiful shot. Read about uh, so let's get the properties. Um, there's 15 editions. That's good. You have the edition in there. Uh, name of the artist is in there. Perfect. Great job on your um, on your properties. And then and then we also have. I think I think this is kind of yep. This is the same same description as the uh, same description as the main description. I'd probably have it a little bit different. Instead of copy paste. Um, Let me see these other what those questions. Does it work as an addition? Yeah, I mean, I think any image that's strong could work as an addition for sure. I think it works as an addition. Um, and then we talked about the question about pre sales and public. So, yeah, I don't really. Um, the, let's let's look at there. Let's see, no no inst no Twitter link, guys. Twitter is the bridge to Web three, the art bridge to Web three. You guys got to put your Twitter links in here. Let's just see if we go to his main page. Here's a Twitter link. Yeah, Twitter link. I would also add the Twitter link to the collections. See what they're focusing on here. So, so right now their pinned tweet is from a different collection. Um, you know, if you have an addition and it's the newest thing, that would probably be my, it would be my pinned tweet. This is August 22nd. We're in October now, um, so I would probably have my pin tweet, my newest copy of work. Artists definitely doing retweets, like that. Look at media. 
So on, on the media six hours ago listed here, um, or a far, I'll retweet this for you. What do you think it's a beautiful piece? I actually would like to comment on the Please. photo itself. Um, well, it's interesting. I've actually seen this festival uh, in Kerala, uh, in India. Um, so that's kind of neat, brings back some memories. Um, or this dance is what they do. Um, but for me, I kind of feel like um, just a couple of technical things, like parts of the fire seems overexposed and it's kind of drawing my eye to it more than to the person in the middle um, so I don't know if there's a way like to reduce the highlights in that um, tone it down just a little bit so that my eye is more drawn to the dancer um, and maybe make the dancer somehow a little brighter um, so that I can see her or him Can't tell if it's a her or him a little bit better um, and then the other thing that draws my mind, and this is, might just be me, is the belly of the person over here. So I don't know, maybe making that a little darker too, so that it doesn't, you know, I just feel like there's these things drawing my eye away from what is the main point of it that could be easily fixed with a little difference in the editing. Yeah, you know what, like, I'm not the biggest fan of vignettes, but like using a vignette, Yes, but not to the point where you can tell it's a vignette, but it probably would reduce some of those lights in the corners here, and it would probably hide the guy with the belly on the right side. Even just a vignette, and then lowering some of the highlights and the themes, and I do agree that I would have done local adjustments. This is all in retrospect, because a bunch of six of these have sold already, so it can really be done now, but in retrospect, you know, for the future, like, I would have done local adjustments, like you said, to bring out um, the figure, like I, like you can just paint in local adjustments of, of exposure or, you know, shadows and bring it up just to have that focus go right to, right to that main subject, because that's clearly the, uh, the main subject of this, of this image. I'm glad you brought that up. Like, that, it's being just one image, one, uh, edition image, it's, um, you know, I don't really have much else for it exactly because it's, you know, it's hard to, uh, to, to go on for so long about just one image. But I think um, you give some good advice and, you know, I, I would change your pin tweet to your current piece. Um, and I would, you know, um, yeah, we ask your friends to retweet and stuff. I retweeted out your piece. So, yeah, best of luck with it. And OpenSea now gives you the ability to put a banner on as well. Um, I think maybe it didn't before, but I added one to mine recently, and I think that's another thing that um, it would be nice to take advantage of. Yeah, also, you know, once again, a lot of minted collections, right? So he has this one up as his pinned tweet. Oh, it's, a, it's an addition. Oh, he does have the banner now. I think I saw it. Maybe it just wasn't loading. Yeah, yeah open sea is going to paint lately. But yeah, I, I love this artist's work. I mean, um, Indian wrestling students, beauty, it's really really skilled. That was the banner for the collection. You can now put a banner on your profile as well, is what, what I was saying. Yeah. So if you go to his profile, it's just gray at the top. Whereas what I ended up doing on mine is putting, you know, pictures from a few different collections. So you could just kind of see, you know, an overview. Yeah, and this this banner is not exactly what we want to see in the photo, right? It's sort of the, the it's the banner that we're looking at here is like the least interesting aspect of this entire. Like the banner should be the, the, the should be the like a you know a long peak strip of the actual subject, and not this lower half here. I'd so like to see the face of the dancer in the banner. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that needs to be done. Um, yeah, and I mean even you know little things like. Just getting a graphic designer to like to like make a banner and have a base and have some interesting elements that's going to fire and stuff like that. 
um, is really helpful. I've used this for my collection um, where I have, you know, like where I have that type of information. Uh, I'll create like, I'll have uh, Anna Julia Gobbles graphic designer create like a movie poster for me before I come out with my release. There's a lot of things that you guys could do before pre-release um, to, to, to really bring eyes to it and really bring attention. Videos is something that I have done that a lot of artists do too. Video, uh, videos, like it'd be really cool to see a video of like this putting in the scenes of it and then, you know, going through the video and then flashing to like the image of that before and then boom, this is going to be available at this date, God of Fire. 15 editions, I think 15 is a great number of editions. You know, with that, I think we can move to the last question. So the last collection is, uh, is somewhere in Anatolia, and this is by Mustafa Urbas. And let's see, we got some questions here. Um, is five photos sufficient? Is it cohesive? All right, so um, let's, look. so this, this banner is, is looking pretty good. This one looks pretty good. Um, the album in which I try to explain the human life, geographical structure, and life stories of Anatolia in a cine, cine, cinematic way, cinema, cinematographic way, I can say that right now, will uh, contain a maximum of 10 photographs. Photos will be uploaded at a certain time interval. That's not very specific, though. Like, I think collectors probably want to know when those photos are going to be released. So how many are released now? One, five? Okay, so five images. Um, let's sort it from oldest. I'm gonna see how old the collection is. I think this collection's been around for a minute. Um, four months. Okay, so four months the collection's been around. So let's, let's yeah, so yeah, description I think needs a little bit of work on what really what you're trying to show here. Um, so when you look at it, um, is five photos sufficient? I think five photos is sufficient. Um, is it cohesive? Yeah, it's very cohesive in the fact that um, the images uh, have like the same mood and vibe and tonality. Um, if I'm just looking at this, um, there's, I think, three maybe three images that stand out to me, just looking at the grid. Like this car one is really interesting. The sheep's here, this person walking down in the road. Also even this one here. But oh, let's just open up a few of them. Car on the road, so dusty dreams. Like every morning, he had to get up from his cozy bed and go to his hated job that morning. He was just a cog in a wheel of life, uh, jumped on his old companion, gave life to the engine. He liked to keep it as white as his dreams, but the dusty road he went every morning and the dusty town where he had to live did not allow it. Beautiful description. Bring that to the artist statement. Bring, bring that writing to the artist statement. Um, try to open the image here. Yeah, it's uh, I you know I, I love the I love the fog, you know I love the vibe of, of these images. Um, the car is a nice subject. I think it's a I think it's a, it's a pretty nice shot. Like you said, you're going for a cinematic vibe. It's got that 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which creates that An interesting shot. I don't know if some of these shots are a little dark. Like the sun is coming on on my laptop right now. But it, like this shot is interesting. You have, um, at least you have a leading lines and you have, um, you have, uh, it looks like a man and his, his dog and he's, and they're walking down this sort of rainy, foggy, uh, atmosphere and this background, you have the house. It feels a little bit dark. I don't know. What could you do? Would you change anything in the editing here, Armin, to, to make it a little more punchy? Cause I, I know the, the vibe of these is supposed to be dark, but in a way, it's hard to sort of see some of the elements. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, I love the descriptions of the photos, but when I first opened the collection, nothing really stood out to me. I wonder if in one like this, maybe if the yellow were, you know, a little accentuated a little more, the yellow line in the road and, you know, maybe the road could be edited to stand out a little from the grass on the edges. Um, I think just a little separation between elements uh, might make them stand out a little more. Yeah, it reminds me of Michael, how Michael Sadowski um, creates his, um, what, what you're saying, where he does local adjustments to elements where, let's just take a look, because I think local adjustments is a skill that like everybody should learn. And I'm not, I'm learning it. I'm not that good at it. I'm not going to look, look like it by any means. Um, but I would just like to show what, what he does. Mind's eye, right? So if we look at his works, yeah, you media. can see it even better on his website, uh, full screen. They're just amazing. Oh, on his website. So let's go to his website. This is just for everyone to see. Um, website. Galleries. Let me go to some, something more similar to what I've seen a lot of time studying his website so you probably want to go maybe like switzerland might have some okay what you're talking about okay. these are galleries so if you click in them you'll see more photos yeah um yeah i i super admire this photographer like a lot um for the ability to make certain elements within it really like okay let's open up this thing. so um you know like my eye goes to this road, right? There's a lot of light in this road and there's a lot of light on the sheep here. So it's like, it goes there, it hits the hut, I can see this hut and it just, everything, it brings you out into, then all of this up here is like, you know, I, I, you know, you can tell, well, he's shooting in really great lighting, but at the same time, he's making local adjustments to things like this for sure, right? Like, um, where the important elements in this photograph, and there's two elements that are really important, right? Like this steeple here in this town, and then also this, this, this mountain, right? And so this not so much, this dark one, right? And if he wanted to, he could bring this, he could bring the shadows up in this, but it would take away from what we're trying to focus on. So I think it's just a good lesson in um, what parts of the image you really want to stand out. See, so you see how this is really dark over here. It, it doesn't. If this was lightened up, you know, you, you know, my your eyes would probably start here. I think he wants your eyes to start more around here. You know, it, this leads it in, and then it's just boom, and then all the lit up elements, right? And so let's go back to the collection. And so, and if we look at this here. Imagine if we had the road, like you were saying, right? Just more locally lit and the, the, um, the subjects within this more locally lit where the rest of the elements fogged out could, and our eyes would go straight to the subject. And I think that that's, I think that that's kind of what we're talking about, right? Um, I think it's, I think it's better done in, in, in this image of the it could even probably be even 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 more lifted. Well, let's take and a look you can at see that in right. the other shot. In this one, the road really stands out, and it makes more of a focal point. Um, your eyes kind of drawn along the road. In in the blue van, right? This blue, I'm, about, I'm trying to open it up. Yeah. So this one, this one for me, my eye kind of just goes right to that. Are in the room. And it's because like of the white element that's over here, it's like you look at the image and like I'm automatically like my eyes automatically just go zoom right over here, boom, right to this car. 
And then, you know, this, and this is layered very well too, right? Like we have the, like, this is sort of the foreground, mid ground, background, you have the atmosphere with it. And this one doesn't seem too dark to me, right? It seems like it's a brighter image. It's a lot easier for me to see the elements that I want to see, right? Whereas this is, um, is, is, it's beautiful what's happening here, and it's a moment in so, of solitude. But imagine, like you said, with this road, imagine if you brought punch the whites or the exposure on just the road, you painted it in nicely, and then you just brought out the people just a little bit more, that this could just be more impactful. But yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly cohesive, right? Um, and this, this shot's interesting too, right? I, I, there's, a, there's a story here, right? It looks like a, there's a man on a horse. It looks like maybe he's with his boy. And they're, um, you know, they're herding sheep. All the sheep are just all together. It shows that um, they have control over their, um, over their, you know, over their sheep, over the herd. And it's, uh, and you know, have this beautiful misty background. Okay. Yeah, I agree that the collection is cohesive and it tells the story. Um, I think it would just be, you know, making each photo stand out a little bit more like you were describing. Yeah, I think if he does that, um, then yeah, it could be, it could, it could go from, from good to great. Like you can, like especially this, this one, I love this shot. I mean, just, I just want it, I just want it to stand. I wanted to grab my, I needed to have a little more punch and zest. But the descriptions are really, really good. You got the, um, and your, uh, the banner is good. You placed the banner really well. A lot of people are not doing this correctly. Um, you got your link to your Instagram, your Twitter. Um, and yeah, I would try to bring some of those great descriptions from the actual images into the artist statement. I'm not talking about copy and pasting. I'm talking about your, your ability to write really well and convey a story talk about talk about what somewhere in anatolia means to you you have anything else on no nothing else oh well i think it was a really good session today we covered a lot of really really good points and it's a lot of really really good artists and um and yeah it's just uh it's a, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed this. So, um, and the I and, agree. yeah, and all the people who who and and the difference the difference in the work, right? From combination in art um, to this collection here of these environmental portraits, you know, children of the city, rooster feathers, a lot of different type of work to look at, and um, it seems like the main point to hit on, right, guys, is you know. Outside of the banners, because I think cameras need a lot of help for, for you guys in a lot of your collections, but the but the but the cohesive not cohesiveness the um the calling down, knowing what the what, knowing what the greatest images are in the collection, keeping it smaller if you only have this. because what what happens if you have a bunch of images that are not so good and a bunch of images that are really good. The great images get lost in the images that aren't, aren't as powerful, and it, it'll hold a collector back. So I think less is more, um, and adding to it later on, something that I like to do is add some images, let them sell, focus on that story, focus on your story, and um, and you know let them sell, well, let them sell out through your story and through the uh, the power of the images, you know, and just be active in the space. That's it. That's what I got. But um, is there poaps today, Gun? Yeah, they're in the chat. I posted them a little early. Got ahead of myself. <laughs> oh man, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Arwin. For like three AMAs within like a month. We appreciate you so much. We really, you really add, really, really add a lot. Discussions very, very easy go back and forth with you and I learned a lot from uh, listening to what you say and you know some of your opinions are different from mine and that's really good it's good for people to hear 
uh, different opinions and always the same opinions. Really great space. Thanks. Yeah, thank you both. A lot of good co um, collections today. Absolutely. For sure. Looking forward to next week. Thanks, Mike, for hosting and for preparing everything. And thank you to everyone who submitted their collections. Um, it's been a great session. Cool. All right. With that, I will, uh, I will end the session here in three, two, one. Bye, everyone.